now I'm going to go to Kentucky. Yes, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to invite an older, an old, older, an old member of ours. <laughs> <laughs> Doug, Doug Miller is going to do a demonstration tonight. Here's a demonstration pre warning, folks. Doug is handling this demonstration. If you wish to ask questions of Doug, please feel free to do so. Uh, we would rather not have you say, you know what I would do, but uh, let's let Doug do his demonstration first, and then it's open field. All right, Doug, what are we doing tonight, sir? All right, I, I've got a board here on the lathe with uh, four of my pool ball boxes. Um, the three, the 10, and the four all have their lids on them. Uh, the 15, that little lid got lost somewhere in the, in the last move. So uh, I'm going to have to make a lid for that. And, and as I was looking at these the other day, uh, the three particularly is chipped on the edge, and so uh, the lid is. And so I'm going to redo. I'm going to make a wood one. Um, I, I told Dean a month, six weeks ago, that I would do this. He it, That was mentioned. It was brought up in our discussion uh, right here in the meeting. And, and uh, I showed uh, the four, I think. I showed it. And uh, Dean immediately texts me and then calls me the next day. And I want you to do that. Dane. And we said, we said, yeah, Dane. Um, we said, excuse me? It's Dane out there reminding you that it's Dane. Yes, Dane did it. It's his fault. <laughs> yep. um, but anyway, uh, uh, we, we want to do this for you tonight. Uh, I told him I needed to get some practice in, so I did a little practice piece uh, yesterday. There's a little, little five ball uh, with the wood lid, just a solid wood lid. You can see there it is uh, hollowed out. Um, one thing, let me see if I can get it up here where you can see it. You see the, the white dot on the inside? That's the inside of the five on the other side. And as I'm, I did not realize until I started doing these, where that five is upside right, if I spin it directly around, the five's going to be upside down. Um, that's so that no matter on where it is on the table, you should be able to see the number. Um, but anyway, it doesn't cause really any problems, except it does create a front and a back. Uh, the lid, it's, it indexes very nicely. Uh, it's it's not a, a pop fit by any means, but it uh, it does sit there right nicely. It's it's uh, that one happens to sit very well, uh, fits real good. So let me get these out of the way, and then we'll talk about holding. Um, Eddie's Eddie's thing has always been if you can hold it, you can turn it. Well, we got to hold this pool ball, and it's round. How are we going to hold it? We talked about it a little bit. Uh, with the uh, bowling balls. Um, I can see this same kind of a chuck working for the bowling balls. It just has to be a lot bigger. What I've got here is a piece of mahogany. Uh, it was a piece that was just laying around in my shop several years ago when I first started doing these. I turned, well, first off, I turned it around and I turned uh, my, my uh, tenon on the back end. Uh, you can see, uh, if I get everything on, you can see the marks where I, was marking center and whatnot, and I missed just slightly, but it doesn't matter because we're going to make it round anyway. Um, but anyway, I've got my tenon, turned this, this outer part round, and then I hollowed it out in the center so that it would hold a pool ball. Tonight, we're going to use a number one. Uh, you can see it just it drops in there real nice. When I first started doing these, I had another little piece that I would drop in here because you you have to start it off, do the bottom, and then uh, you turn it over, do the top side. Well, I had a piece that I put in here to space it out just a fraction. I have looked this shop upside down, and uh, I cannot find it. So uh, we're not going to worry about that. There is a workaround uh, for doing that. Let me start off by putting this in the chuck so that we can, can free up my hands from that. So there's my holder in, in the uh, chuck. Um, there's been a whole lot of discussion on the internet about chucks and about uh, record power versus um, Axminster uh, versus everybody else. Um, this is the original Nova chuck. It uses the Tommy bars. Um, there's the, the basic one. There's the one that holds the backside with the, the crook on it where you can see it there you go 
Um, that's what I'm using here. I've got one of the G3s that I really like, um, but I just don't, I don't find I need it that often. Uh, it's got the larger jaws that have the shark's teeth all the way up and down. Uh, anyway, Nova Chuck, this is my homemade ball chuck. And what I'm gonna do, so luckily with the one, it doesn't matter if it's, it's straight up and down that way, turn it around, it's straight up and down that way. So what we're gonna to try to do is get that centered on the equator. And what I can do is kind of hold it and turn and see if I've got about the same amount and I don't. There's about halfway on that one. Okay, it drops down just ever so slightly more than halfway. Then I wanna make sure that number is straight up and down as possible. That's what I've got right now. But if I let go of that, that ball is going to fall out. How do I hold it? That's where these come in. The simple hose clamps. Um, these are not terribly expensive. Um, if you're going to try this, I would uh, suggest you get the better ones uh, if you can. The reason being, these do break from time to time. Oh, and I didn't talk about the slots. Um, let me undo that so you can see those slots. Kind of like a castle. Well, once I got uh, that inside hollowed out, I went over to the bandsaw, just laid it on the bandsaw, went straight in, turned it just a little bit straight in to cut the two sides. Did that, uh, made slots all the way around. Seems like I drilled it maybe. Uh, kind of looks like I did right there. Um, yeah, you can kind of see the bottom of that slot is round where I drilled a hole. So I just cut the sides off to uh, make a, a, I wasn't even real careful about making it uh, real good and straight. I just cut them, let them be. Um, they are what they are. And I'm not too worried about it because we're going to, all we're using it for is to clamp this ball into this jig. Uh, okay, that's relatively straight there. Yeah, those work. Those will work like collet chucks. Yeah, and they, yeah. And they work the great. Same uh, idea. You can you can even make them out of PVC. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. At the time, um, I learned this. I learned this from the guy. He lives out in Arizona, close to well, he lives outside of Phoenix, and um, I'll be doggone if I can remember what his name is. That's been several years ago now. I was out there for a meeting and uh, a group of us from, wasn't from Wood Central, but from another internet group that was meeting at the time, uh, Wood Turner's Resource. I think they're still around. I'm just not involved with them any longer for various reasons. But anyway, um, went out there and this guy had been doing tons of these, these billiard ball boxes. And so uh, knowing I was going out there and knowing he was going to come to this gathering, I said, can you bring your stuff and, and show us how to do it? And he brought all his stuff and, and uh, he didn't, he did not uh, give me any of it, but I sure got to see it firsthand and uh, came home and rigged all this up myself. And trust me, guys, this is the hardest part of the whole thing right here with this jig if, if you had a regular probably if you did it out of pvc it'd be simpler all right i think i got it now you got to make sure you hold that ball in as you tighten um because it will squirt it right out i've got a little divot uh, at the base of that of the inside of this jig um so it sits down in there real nice there we go that's tight oh by the way I almost forgot. I showed you the, the little wing bowl last week. Uh, I did buff that on the buffing wheels and it did not work. So I basically sanded it all back with uh, uh, 320 sandpaper and then redid it. That's got about 20, 25 coats of lacquer on it now, front and back. So uh, it shines like new money. That was kind of the point of that one. All right, uh, enough of the bragging. First thing we got to do, we got this in here. Uh, let's see this go the other way. 
you know, first thing I got to do is tighten this lock nut. My, I've got to get some lock tight and put on this uh, hold down nut. It just it works its way loose every once in a while, and if I forget to tighten it up, it will uh, it won't fall out on me. But it just gets where I cannot tighten it at all. All right, I'm on. Uh, I'm going to turn the lathe speed down really low. So like 150, just to make sure we're in and spinning. All right, that's not too bad. Get my face shield on. A little air to blow the dust off. There we go. Now, first thing I want to do, I'm going to take my small parting tool, uh, this little bitty dude, Came out of a mini turning set. Now that I got that already, I want to turn that just a little further. Make sure those buckles don't hit the tool rest. You'll know it if you do. And I've got it, just for sake of argument, I've got it that running at 950 currently. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to take just a slight inward angle, and I'm going to part the no, I got to remember what I'm doing. This is the bottom. I'm going to part it off just a little lower than where I was. Still got a slightward inward angle. And just, just to get me started on this particular one, I'm going to take my bowl gouge and very gently, I want to come in here and just take this off. There we go. This is, uh, for you guys that turn resin, this is a lot like turning resin. You get a lot of streamers. This is a resin. Um, I don't know it's the same kind of stuff like what we cast and turn, but uh, it is a resin. If you do these things, what you'll find is that there are pool balls differ from set to set. Um, depends on how old they are, really. This is a more modern set, and so it will, it's going to be more of a, more like a, a, a epoxy resin. What I understand is there are some that actually have uh, plaster on the inside. All I'm doing here, and I'm making sure I've got just the tiniest of little foot. Uh, I want a foot on here. This is concaved in here. I'm going to concave it just one more pass. Another reason I kind of need a spacer uh, because it's, it causes it to drop down into the the uh, jig even further. There we go. I'm done with the bottom. So what I'm going to do now, as bad as I hate to, because uh, I don't have, I don't want to turn on my dust collector or my air cleaner, either one. Um, air cleaner wouldn't be so bad, but my, my old Craftsman shop back that I use for my dust collector is so loud. That's that's what this is right here. And it does a very good job. I had been thinking that I was not getting very good dust collection out of it. Um, was working, doing a little cleanup here just a little while back. And for whatever reason, I stretched that hose out with it running. And lo and behold, there was something inside clogging it up. Makes a world of difference when you get out that hose clean. Now, yes, I picked asking, up a tennis ball with mine. Oh, <laughs> that'll clog it. <laughs> um, I've had people ask me before, why do you sand the whole ball? You know, if I'm not changing the shape, but why would I change or sand the whole ball? 
Well, let me tell you guys, I don't know where this pool ball's been. Uh, I know where it's been for the last 10 years. It's been in my possession, but before that, I have no clue. And so I'm going to get all the grease and the grime, crud, who knows what else, off of there uh, by a sanding process. Keeping my hands clear of that, that uh, hose clamp and the buckles. Um, don't ask me how I know. I think it was Dean Grimes told me it hurts. Yeah, that's Dean. Dean told you that. That's it. Glad that I was one hundred grit. What's that? Glad I could help. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I bet we've all done it one time or another. I tell you what. Exactly. I've done some dumb things. Well, that's where Dean got that nickname, Three Knuckle Dean. <laughs> that's it. Something like this, it would just about take your knuckle off. But like I said, I've got this going at 950 right now. If you stuck your knuckle in that, it would hurt. Pretty sure draw blood. Well, that's what Ruth, I mean, Sue was talking about last week with loose fitting clothing. Loose yes. fitting clothing in that rig would not go along. No. No. <laughs> mm -mm. Well, you notice my sleeves are short. <laughs> I've thought so many times about getting a long sleeve smock. And then I changed my mind real quick. Uh, I get to thinking of that long sleeve getting stuck. All right, 240. We're not going to take a long time with this. As you can see, the dust is coming off. I'm sorry, I, I hit a dead zone. It's just what you did there. What did you turn on the bottom? I'm sorry? I, I I went through a dead zone and, and I missed what what you just turned on the bottom there. Did you put a tenon on there or a recess or what? No, this is just a foot. I turned a little uh, uh, hollow foot. Just, just well, it's not even a tenon. It's not a, big enough. Just it's a light just, concave. Yes, okay. very light yeah. concave. Just so it'll sit okay. flat when I turn it back around. Okay, got it. Now, one of the things you can do with these, get these things, guys, is you can take them with each step. You can take them all the way up, even do your micro mesh, you know, wet sand with micro mesh. You may have noticed that that jig was discolored, uh, looked like it had glue on it. I don't think it has any glue. It has a lot of water on it. Um, from where I have micro meshed in the past, and you really don't need any finish this. Uh, this resin is very shiny on its own. So uh, that orange one has not even been waxed. So they, they shine up pretty good without much effort. Okay. Now. See if I can show you this when I get it out you'll be able to see the difference in the sanded part and the non-sanded just by the, the white. <laughs> see the yellowing? Mm -hmm. You can see the wider section there at the bottom. You know, right there. That wider part is where I sanded it. There's going to be a little bit of that white that does not get sanded um, simply because of the way the chuck is. But what I can do once I'm done is to uh, take my 320 and I can sand that by hand just enough to, to whiten the little line that gets left. <clears throat> That's almost even. There we go. Oh, it was. So let it move. Also got the wrong end in there. Okay, it's going to be close enough right there. If I had been on the ball, I could have had my quarter inch ratchet with the right size socket, and that would have been a lot easier than the screwdriver. But the screwdriver works. There we go. Now, now. Now I want to part off for the top. I'm just going to get rid of the top. I'm going to 
figure on doing a uh, wood top with it from the very beginning. So I'm going to come in here and come in at just a bit of an angle because if you go straight, it wants to it wants to run off with the ball. So I'm going to go into it just a little bit. Almost through it. There we go. Back to my bowl gouge. All I'm going to do here is to start the hollowing process. What you can do is save that little cap that, that you part off and then just adjust this so that it makes a, you have a nice receptacle for that to sit into. That's what I did. Oh, let me get this floor ball here. That's what I did with this one. Turn it around so you can see it properly. As you can see, that's the purple. It's the same purple. It's, it fits right in there. It's not tight, it's, it's loose. It could be just a touch deeper so it doesn't wobble back and forth, but that's all I did with that. I saved that cap and then made a recess because the color goes all the way through. I wasn't worried about it, you know, turning white or anything. So it works very, very well if that's what you want to do. I just kind of determined yesterday that this is what I was the way I was going to do it. Doug, Billy's asking kind of, what those are made of. The ball. I wish I knew. <clears throat> it's some kind of a resin. Um, I would suggest you use your dust collection, um, especially when sanding. Let's see, I'm going to stop there because I want to put a little ledge just inside of the <clears throat> okay i just did a google for you doug and it says yeah. that um billiard balls are made out of phenolic <laughs> resin or polyester okay. resin okay so that would be the two products that they make them from that'd be the two primaries anyway at least the newer ones yeah right. if you don't get a an old one um I did one. It was a it was a one that came all by itself, just a loner, and uh, uh, it was dusty, dusty. It wasn't poly, it wasn't uh, plaster, but it was some kind of white material, like some of the. Uh, uh, now some of the balls. older ones were made out of bakelite. Yeah, yeah. So that may have been what you got a hold of there. Maybe this is just uh, one of the many uh, finishers. From Easy Wood, um, use whatever you want. I just I have these. I like them. Except, polyester resin thing kind of blows my mind because I've never seen a polyester resin that resilient. It's really brittle stuff, typically. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. I'm moving over to the 
the uh, for you guys who watch the guys in England, this is the uh, number one hollower. <laughs> um, quite a fuss with some of the guys who don't have one. Uh, and the guys who do are rubbing it in because it does move some wood or, in this case, resin very quickly. In fact, what I want to do here, I'm going to get a nice divot. I'm gonna come over. I don't do this very often. Hey, hey this Doug. Project is... Yes, sir. Quick question. Uh, I'm assuming because of the way it's mounted that you're taking very light cuts. They're pretty light. Yeah. Well, that's still not the right tool. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. I'm gonna take my. This is a three-inch drill on a handle. I'm just going to run that in. Once you cut the V out, why didn't you use the drill then? I could have. Um, I just always forget. I forget to do it, honestly. I'm looking in, every time I pull down, I'm looking in to see how deep I am. Um, I'm almost to the bottom of the, of the number now. There we go, I pulled out some yellow. That will speed up this uh, hollowing tremendously. do know that uh, the intent of all these easy wood tools, in fact, most all of your uh, um, carbides is that they sit flat on the tool rest. I am turning this up and pulling my handle up as well. So it's a, a slightly trailing um, motion that I've got, plus I'm tilted on its side. Um, this, is, this is a regular flat carbide blade on here but it's acting more like a negative rake. Get some of that out of there. It's getting quite full. Well, there we go. All right, what do we got? Uh, we're not quite to the bottom of the hole yet. Sorry, you can't see. I can't see, so why should you, right? Now, one thing I will not do, I'll do a lot of things, but I will not stick my finger in there with it running. It's a good way to get your finger twisted right off. We're about halfway through the, the white section. A 
Polemic resin. That's interesting. All right, almost to the bottom. Just got to clean it out now. Almost there. Somebody recently just said, why in the world would you want that little small cutter? That little small cutter will flat eat some material really quick. That could use a little more, but I'm going to stop there with the hollowing. It's hollowed uh, to the bottom, at least as far as where I drilled. Um, so I'm going to move this out of the way. We're going to slow the speed down back to 450. And do a little sanding on the, on the outside here. Um, said a while ago this is more for cleaning the ball than it is anything else I'm not really shaping I don't want to because I'm not reshaping the outside of this ball I just kind of want to leave it as it is I'm just cleaning it up more than anything and if I start at 150 that that will uh, kind of break that surface and allow the uh, other grits to do their job a little easier I'm just doing the very opening here. I'll come back later and do the just inside the throat. This is a wee bit easier than a bowling ball. I do have a bowling ball over there that I'm going to do one of these days. I'm probably going to put it between the drive spindle and the uh, tail stocks. Uh, no, I'm going to have to do a live center. I'll do a, I'll do a large, uh, yeah, one of those things. Soft touch. You d you did see Doug Rose demonstration, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Also, know where yeah. his bowling balls came from. <laughs> <laughs> He, he said in one of his videos that he did on YouTube, he said that somebody had, had warned him about getting thrift store bowling balls, paying $2 for them or $3, whatever it was he paid for them. Um, they've probably been dropped and who knows what else. And in, in his situations where his balls came apart, um, it looked to me like that's exactly what had happened. Like they broke at a fissure. They shouldn't do that. His first one he turned came out beautifully. And then he had one that exploded for no reason. He left it on the lathe overnight and it, it was broken when he came back the next day. But I think that's what happened with it too. I think it had an internal crack and when he had a little bit of pressure on it, it just gave way. All right, 240.
But anyway, I've got a bowling ball. I've had it for a long time just for that purpose. I was afraid to use it for a long time. I, I had contacted two or three of the bowling ball companies. And they said, that is not their intended use. Under no way, shape, or form should I think about putting them on a lathe. Well, that's all the more reason for me to do it. Oh, yeah. Never tell a wood turn to don't. That's right. Well, they, they, Doug, they probably didn't know what a lathe was. They probably didn't. Didn't Carl Jacobson do that in a couple videos with bowling balls? I think he did. Yep. Who knows with Carl? He may have gone out and bought a brand new one just for that. No, he picked up I'm some used ones, that. but he, he found out that they're not all made the same. No, they're not. They're not. Every company has their own procedure, their own resins, um, their own materials that they use to weight those balls. Those balls are weighted uh, a certain amount. Used to be, years ago, they used lead. Um, that's Yikes. really why I was calling. I was calling the bowling ball company because I wanted to know what their particular ball was was weighted with, and the guy would not tell me. Huh. Um, let's see, screwdriver. That's what I'm after. The like core I said, this of the could Manhattan, go on. The core of the Manhattan rubber had asbestos in it. Mm, yes, right. Yeah, it pays to check them out. And, and with the information that's on the internet today, you can find out a lot more than I could when I was checking on it. Okay, here's a great example. You can see right there the line very distinctly from what's been sanded and what hasn't. It's sanded on both sides, and that dark yellow line is a line where uh, it hadn't been hit yet. But I can hit that with by hand, take my, well, take my 320, I can just hit that. It doesn't take a whole lot. Go cross it at an angle, go straight up and down. You know, take five, ten minutes and just sit here and hand sand it. It's just soft drink, cup of coffee, whatever it is. I'm not going to do the whole thing right now, but there you can see. Could you hit it with white diamonds? You think white diamonds would buff it right up? Um, I did that with uh, that five ball, and um, it, it gummed up. Um, I, I don't know if it may be me. I've had trouble with the white diamond on just about everything. That's what messed up that, that uh, walnut bowl. When I hit it with the white diamond, I have this black gum all over the bowl. Yeah. White diamond is um, actually pretty abrasive. Um, yeah, I would try yeah. like the blue jeweler's ru uh, rouge that's used in buffing like CA finishes. That or... Um, or Varnex. Varnex, yes. That's what I was yep. trying to come up with. Yep. Barnex would probably work a treat. Yep. I, I had given up on the bill system, and I kind of forgot why, uh, and that's it. <laughs> well, I use um, bill extensively, but uh, and I use white diamond, but uh, I just do very lightly with it, and it's only on certain woods. Some woods I won't even touch with it. I'll just go right to the wax. Right. Yep. Like uh, walnut, typically do... Yeah, maybe the triple E and then go to wax. Yeah, and um, and, and I almost I never do the triple E because I use the X wood paste system, so that takes right. care of that. So, but uh, yes. yeah, if you use a if you use a white diamond on a walnut, you'll have white all over it, and it'll never come out. Yeah. And and as much as I love the X or any abrasive paste for that matter. You think I'm going to do it on that piece? No, no, no. that ain't happening. <laughs> I would think not. No. No, no, I, I love my, and this is not a commercial, it's just what I use. I, I love the Axe Paste. Yep. Uh, I made my own, um, loved it. I used, um, mm -hmm. Yorkshire Grit, I loved it. I, I used Axe, I loved it. 
Um, you know, it, it, the abrasive paste and wax business is great. I love it. It's just uh, some pieces like that wing bowl. It's not practical. You can right. do it by hand. You can do it by hand. You can even get some buffs to put in a drill. Um, they would work. That would work fine. Um, but it's just not worth it to me. That that I did a lacquer finish on that. Uh, I wanted shiny on that particular one. But there you have it. That's not shiny by any means. That's just a 320 grit. You can see the yellow, the dark line is gone. And that's all the way around. That dark line's completely gone. But I can now, I can put that, uh, you know, I can make a jam chuck and uh, buff that up. I can use my axe if I want to. Um, I can do all kinds of things. But that doesn't using, leave me with. How about using carnauba wax? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's in carnauba wax is what axe wax is. Oh, okay. It's a, it's a, it's been uh, softened, but uh, that, yeah, that's what it is. Or you could do carnauba wax on a build buff. This is a piece of cherry uh, pulled out of the, out of the bin. The small, small pieces that haven't found what they're going to be yet, bin. There we go. We'll make a lid out of that. Shouldn't be too tough. Nice piece of cherry. It has a little bit of figuring in it. I turned a piece, and this is just a little left over off of that piece. What I do need to do is measure. Get that over here so you can see it. This is about as much measuring as I do at the lathe. Come on. There we go. That's my outer diameter, and I'll get my inner diameter here in a minute once I get this. Yeah, that one's too big, and that one's too... Okay. Get my handy-dandy bowl gouge here. Make sure we're not hitting. I'll crank my speed way up. Okay, there's 12.50. And I think I said it last time, speed is relative. Um, the only reason I say what the speed is, because some people just can't stand it. They got to know what the speed is. Turn most Jimmy things Clues. at 532. Yeah, yeah. Jimmy Clues turns at the speed of light. I can't, I can't, I, I have a hard time watching Jimmy. I love his work. Um, I've had classes with Jimmy and uh, really enjoyed what he taught me, but he scares me. Yeah, Jimmy was at our club a few years ago, and when he started turning, everybody moved away from the lathe. Absolutely. <laughs> he, he did the same thing at our club in Louisville when I was there. He came and he put a two-by-four on the lathe. It, was, it would just fit when it swung around. And the first time he turned the lathe on, it was at full speed on a one-way, wow. whatever that speed is. It's terrifying. The guys, who had, <laughs> the guys who had rushed in and got grabbed those front and center seats, they got up and moved real quick. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's because they're smart. <laughs> but I've never seen him have one come off. No, no, he did not have it come off. Nope. Um, and he, he made the statement. I noticed you guys moved back. That's good for you. I'm glad you'd moved. However, <laughs> um, those guys, want, they, they need to. I don't want to be the first one there I, when it does come off. Right. I don't either. Nope. You and me okay, both. Where are we? So y'all don't want to be the catcher, huh? <laughs> no. no. Nope. No. Nope. <laughs> that was before they kept saying, oh, you got to have a shield. You got to have a shield. A club I used to belong to, it used to put a plastic shield between the lathe and the audience. And right. we had everything. We had three cameras watching the work. And the change in hierarchy, they said, oh, we don't really need that. 
the very next month, they hit the secretary right in the middle of the head with a bowl. Mm. Oh. Yes, sir. Yes, but sir. They don't it need happens. that. You know? No. Ouch. Right. I bet it. I bet it came back. Yeah. Well, uh, <clears throat> I got to leave that alone. Okay. <laughs> well, the nice thing about this club is everybody has a safety shield between them and the tournament. That's right. Oh yeah. Uh, amen, brother. You don't even have to dunk. <laughs> I'm still wiping shavings off my shirt. Why is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, why'd you do a captain like that? I did these pool balls for the Louisville Club, and uh, that that was still before I had to have the shield. But they did insist that I'd be an AAW member so that I'd be covered under the insurance for demonstrators, which is not a bad thing. There we go. Now that'll fit. I have now a problem I with is... having, I have a problem with people wanting to be safe because of insurance. It's not well, the reason to be safe, folks. I understand it. Yes, yes. Seems like it was about a year later when they came out with the deal where demonstrators had to be behind a plexiglass shield. Which is, a, again, that's another, that's a good safety issue. But at first, when you're not, when you've not done that before, it can be claustrophobic for sure. Yeah. And most demonstrations are now done with cameras, which didn't happen 20 years ago. So right. it's... I remember the old days where people would gather around the lake and you could hardly get a head spot in there to, to see what was being turned. I'll never forget slinging CA on the first two rows right in front of me once. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't do that on purpose, would you, Billy? No, no. And I was so embarrassed. <laughs> and laughed all the way home did you well no I laugh, I laugh about it now but it, it wasn't real funny back then well that, actually it kind of was because everybody was laughing but still <laughs> everybody was now laughing you at you at that point right just checking to see what we got Okay. Gotta make that second tenon just a short, just a little shorter, too tall. Now I, I I'm sure you guys can't see it. When when I was just making that cut just then there Beautiful curls, even though this wood is dry as a bone, nice curls were coming off. Now it's too big. You must be doing that Mark Soleil slicing thing. Well, that's, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Um, if your tool is sharp and you're slicing the wood, you get curls even, even though wood's extremely dry. What is hitting? Oh, I know what it is. It's this inside one. Well, come on now. I don't know why it's not fitting. I've cut it three times and it's still too short. <laughs> <laughs> There, now it should fit. Oh yeah, that'll work. Now, what do I wanna do for design? Do, do, do. Design's always the hard part for me. I guess it is for most folks, isn't it? It is well, me. 
I want it to look like this. No, I want it to look like that. Sometimes it'll decide what you want it to look like. <clears throat> Sometimes. Yeah. Yep. Always keep in mind, you can't teach art and it comes out of your heart. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, and I, it, I don't think it's really, not really the design, but making up my mind which design I want. <clears throat> it wasn't that long ago somebody said... Somebody said, you can't get shavings off of dry wood. Well, yeah, you can. Oh, yeah. Yeah, come spend a day in my shop. I'll show you. It's what you call sharp tools and slicing cuts. Yep. I got some 100-plus-year-old wormy uh, American chestnut you aren't going to get any shavings from. It's it's so dry it's just dust. Right. All right. Has anybody been watching the new uh, Richard Rafen videos that have been on YouTube? Yeah, I've been watching them. Yes, I have. Well, I didn't know I there was really no enjoyed them. Yeah, he, he I've started doing about eight months ago. Got yeah. Oh, okay. I'll check it out. I find it real interesting. He does 90% of his bowls with a spindle gouge. Yep. Yeah. And why, Inside and, and outside. Because, because the spindle gouge is cheaper than a bowl gouge. Yes. And then he does the very bottom with a scraper. The key thing there is for new turners, he does it with a spindle gouge, not a spindle roughing gouge. Yes, exactly. Right. And he does mention that um, in the video yesterday or day before, he talks about that. It's not a spindle roughing gouge. And why? And there was a time when all they had was scrapers to do a bowl with. Absolutely. And I saw Brendan Simp a couple of years ago do uh, in Australia do a, a bowl with uh, just scrapers. It was just a phenomenal piece of work. I watched Gorse Duplessis do a demonstration of Bayou Wood Turners, and he carried the tools that were going to do this this bowl or this lidded box. He carried them in in his pants pocket, two scrapers. Hmm. And you couldn't beat Reed, the work. Reed, Reed. Yeah. Reed Gray, aka uh, Robo. He does some phenomenal bowls, nothing but a scraper as well. Can't believe Thank nobody you, mentioned my ring. Should have mentioned uh, it. I, I, I typically take my rings off. I just totally forgot. Just noticed it because the gouge was hitting it. I'm just taking a spindle gouge and I'm working the inside at the very top of this, uh, I've got a little knob on the top of this. Get my... 240, and just lay it in my hand. Put 
would have been nice if I sanded that while I was on the lathe, but it's not turned so bad that it won't sand out by hand real easy. Then what I'll probably do, um, once my box is finished and ready to go, I'll, just, I'll shoot this top with a, some rattle can lacquer. Very nice. Very that is nice. That there is again. nice. I like it. It's hollow. Very nice. <clears throat> yeah, that's cool. It's hollowed almost to the very bottom. It's it doesn't lack much. <clears throat> nice little cherry top. In fact, let me uh, real quickly. I just happen to have a can or a little bottle here of uh, Def Sanding Sealer mixed half and half with some some. Uh, Lacquer thinner. A secret formula four oh four. That's it. <laughs> Not to be confused with the cleaner. <laughs> well, that's four oh nine, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm old enough to remember remember formula four oh nine. Yeah, you gotta yeah. get your formulas right, you know. It's gonna cause that's all it. kinds that's of it. problems. All right. Now, Doug, that's a pretty nice piece you have there. Billy Dillard could probably make it into a birdhouse. I, I know, can. I mean, Bob Moffat. Bob Moffat could make it yeah. into a birdhouse. Make drill, that number one drill a little house. hole right there, you're done. Yep. <laughs> That'd be number one birdhouse. Billy, I bet Billy could epoxy it to his lathe bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to live that down, am I? It's going to take a while, Billy. Well, at least you realize that. <laughs> That's great, Doug. Thank job. you, Doug. That's a beautiful piece. Very nice. Really nice. About, uh, about forty-five minutes is all. That's that's not a that's not a tough project. You can knock those out pretty quickly. No, and you were teaching us in that time, so um, it, it and folks, you have to realize this is not a sprint. It's a marathon. So if it takes a little bit longer, it takes a little bit longer. Sure. And, and Doug mentioned the, the, the polishing off he did with the 320. Um, the material that ball's made out of will shine like a diamond. You bring it up slowly with um, wet sanding it. I would wet sand it to about a thousand grit, and then sure. you can buff it. And you don't need a lot That's of good. resin when you buff it. Um, no. So it's really, really cute little project. And I found them at the red, white, and blue dollar store for a whole rack for seven dollars. Wow. That ain't bad. I think no. these came, I think my dad got these for me out of a <laughs> antique shop and they were like thirty dollars or something. Um, it was a complete set, cue ball and all. I still got the cue and the eight ball and eleven and something else. Fifteen, I think. The others have been turned and mostly given away. I've got a, a handful of them here. But that's it. Well, it's a good project for learning technique. It's a good project for mm -hmm. holding. Uh, it yes. will challenge your skill a little bit. Um, and you learn how to do lighter cuts because you can't horse this thing around at all. You'll pull uh, it out one, of that, out of this thing real quick. Mm -hmm. One of our chat members uh, put in that um, he's seen people use that type of chuck, but covered, once it got tightened down, covered the, the, the clamps or the the, the oh I'm, I know the name of that clamp uh, covered Fingers, them with tape the hose clamp yeah the hose yeah, clamps yeah. covered them with the tape uh, like a a, mm -hmm. a black rubber tape or whatever just to give you an idea now that's not going to keep it from hurting you no it's just going to bring it to your attention so thank you if Doug you really, appreciate if you're really concerned you could take like a a pool noodle and cut you a strip out and wrap it around that yeah. and then put some tape around it. Um, that would save you some. You'd know yeah. if you'd, you'd get that pool noodle first before it bit you. Yeah, but it's going to get you. All right. Thank you, Doug. We appreciate the demonstration tonight, sir. Thank, Thank you, Doug. You. Great demo, yeah. Doug. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Very nice. Thanks, Doug. Thank you, guys. Eddie, if you'll go ahead and make me a co-host, I'll, I'll help out for the rest of the meeting. 